so here we have the first one question from the topic of lenses and the light figure 6.1 uh, is a full size ray diagram showing the formation of image by a thin glass lens and then you can see there's a converging lens there's an object placed uh, somewhere in front of the converging lens and then you can see the rays of light being converged at a point where the image is being produced right anyway uh, the first uh, thing is determine the focal length of the lens so for focal length I mean this is a very common mistake what the students are going to do they'll be marrying the distance from here to this point so they'll be calling this as a focal length no for the focal length you have to recall some of the properties of the converging lens and one of the property was if a ray approaches the lens in such a way that it is parallel to the principal axis then it would be passing through the focal point so the point where this ray which was previously parallel to the principal axis the point where this ray cuts the principal axis this point would be called as principal focus represented by capital F and the distance from principal focus and the center of the lens that distance would be called as focal length now you use your ruler and measure how much distance this is 1.8 centimeter right so you simply need to measure the distance between the center of the lens and the principal focus okay then we have the next one this one says circle three items in the list which describes the nature of the image form enlarged let me check so this is the size of the object height of the object and this is the height of the image is image uh, larger than the object yes it is so the image is enlarged we can circle this one then we have the next one same size if it is, if it is enlarged then it can't be same size so we need to skip this one diminished also skipped because the image is enlarged it cannot be diminished and enlarged at the same time inverted yes it is it is inverted object is facing upward the uh, image is facing downward so the image is upside down it is inverted upright if it is inverted it can't be upright and the, then the last one is real and virtual image is real because you see the rays after passing through the principal uh, after passing through the lens they were actually converging at a point we did not have to extend any of those rays backward there is no backward extension the image is real also whenever you have object on one side of the lens and image on the other side of the lens then the image is real so if the image is real it can't be virtual the next one is state one feature of a virtual image so I explained it already virtual image is the image that cannot be projected on screen the rays do not actually intersect we have to extend them back right the most famous one uh, with the way we define the virtual image we say the image that cannot be projected on the screen the examples a real image is the image formed by for example photograph and larger projector most important one the projector you see projector in the movie theaters in the cinema halls they project the image onto a wall there is a sheet and special protocols but the image is being projected in front of you now you see yourself in the mirror you see your image that image cannot be projected on any screen you just see it there on the mirror you can't project it somewhere else so that image is virtual okay 
So here we have the next one. Figure sample one is a full scale diagram on a small nail and of a small nail and this is your object in front of a thin converging lens. The line L represents the lens. Okay, so this is a converging lens and this line is representing the converging lens. The nail is represented as it is. This is a full scale diagram. What does that mean? It means whatever you measure from the graph or from uh, this image that gives you the actual dimensions and matter of fact these small of uh, the small five blocks or five small blocks should be equal to one centimeter if you marry through the ruler that should be equal to one centimeter this is what the full scale diagram means all right anyway the focal length of the lens is three centimeter then the part A, rays of light parallel to XY are traveling towards the lens. Rays of light parallel to XY. What is XY? Parallel to X. Okay, XY is the principal axis. You see, XY is this one line. This is the principal axis. So describe what happens to the light after it passes through the lens. All the rays of light that are parallel to the principal axis, they converge at a single point. And what do we call that point? We call that point principal focus. And beyond the principal focus, they first converge in the principal focus. And if we extend them further, they diverge again. All right, so rays parallel to the principal axis, after passing through the lens, they converge at a point, that point is called principal focus. And if you extend them further, those rays would diverge. So if the rays are like this, for example, just a random diagram, these rays would be converging at a single point, that point would be called as principal focus. For example, in this situation, you see all of these rays are intersecting at a point or converging at a point. This point is called principal focus. And if the rays are extended further, means this part, the rays are once again diverge. We clear with this one? Okay, so then we have the next one on figure 7.1. Mark and label with it uh, with an F. Each of the two principal focuses of the lens. So principal focus means, yeah, this information is given, you see, the focal length of the lens is three centimeter. It's given over here, and also it is a full scale diagram. Yeah, there's no other scale, so it would be easy for us. Full scale diagram, we need to mark the principal focus. So the principal focus would be three centimeters away from the center of the lens, because the focal length is three centimeter. So five blocks mean one centimeter, according to this picture, five blocks means one centimeter. And once you measure through the ruler, five blocks would actually be meaning one centimeter. So this is one centimeter, then one, two, three, four, five, two centimeter. And here we will be having three centimeter, and this would be F, the principal focus, at three centimeter mark because we know the focal length was three centimeter. So once again, on the left side, we'd be uh, doing the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, one centimeter. One, two, three, four, five, two centimeter. And here we have three centimeter. So this is the other principal focus. All right, and once again, the distance between the principal focus and the center of the lens is given which is three centimeters so we have to use this uh, sentence in order to mark the principal focus on both side of the lens let's take a look at the next one this one is done uh, the small nail n of height 1.2 centimeter 
is positioned 2 cm to the left of the lens. We can see that on the diagram as well. By drawing on the figure 7.1, find the position of the image of the object and, and add image I to the diagram. Okay, so we need to complete the ray diagram for the object shown over there. So keep it in your mind, we always draw three rays or at least you have to draw two rays in order to show the image of the object in this situation. So just let me check how many, if they have put any limitation on the rays, no. So one of the rays we start from the, uh, from the top of the lens in such a way that it is passing through the center of the lens and then what happens to that ray? it goes undeviated right we study that in the theory when a ray is extended from the top of the lens uh, from the top of the object and it passes through the center of the lens it goes undeviated and this is the very first ray that we draw to complete the diagram and then the second ray we draw is a ray from the top of the object but in such a way that it is parallel to principal axis. Now what happens to this ray? This ray would be going through the principal focus. So it would be passing through the principal focus. Now what do we have? So we have a situation in which the rays of light are not intersecting on the other side of the lens. What is the next step? Yes, extend them backward. So the first one, I'm going to extend it backward. And the second one, I'm going to extend that one also. I have extended the rays backward. And the thing is, once you're extending the rays backward, the extended rays are shown with the dotted line. So I'm going to convert those red lines to a dotted line. What you can do is once you have drawn the rays, you simply take out the eraser and just erase part of the rays. Like this. And the point of intersection of these two rays gives us the location of the image, the position of the image. So the, the rays of light are being intersected at this point and we draw a ray from the principal focus towards the point of intersection and this blue line gives you the image of the nail N. So I'm going to label it as I. Okay so done with this one we have uh, located the position of the image I of the object N. All right, moving on to the next part. The next part says, state and explain whether image I is real or virtual. I mean, we should be already aware of it. The image is virtual because we had to extend the rays backward. The rays of light were not actually intersecting on the other side of the lens. We had to extend the rays backward with the dotted lines. So that's why the image is virtual. Okay, moving on to the next one. State the name given to the lens when it is used in this way. This is a situation where your object is small and the image is magnified. Object is small or whatever the object was, that object has been magnified. The image has been magnified. So this kind of situation is used in a magnifying glass. So you get a virtual image, you cannot project the image anywhere. So you write magnify.